but you have cards like the Water or Lola Ninetales that could actually uh, attack for weakness, uh, maybe do some snipe damage here and there. The damage from Feather Arrow also builds up throughout the game. And then, of course, Sublimation GX just take a knockout straight away. Yeah, there's a uh, lot of different options for attacking with uh, for this, this, this deck, and that's exactly what makes it such a strong archetype generally. But we are off, everyone, and it looks like Jitmin is going to be going first. Yeah, and knows exactly <laughs> what he's playing against with Yes for his start. There's no hiding that Ultra Beast there. Nope. Uh, just an insane looking Pokemon, too. Uh, <laughs> I, I love it. <laughs> It's uh, it looks like there's like this kind of this candy that it, that it looks like. I'm trying. I can't remember what it's called exactly, but it's like this sort of reminds you of that. Just <laughs> um, but yeah, just so the free attacks there, bursting burn. Yeah, it was a leading attack. It's not even not even uh, that bad because it just enables you to take your opponent's active Pokemon and make it both poisoned and go oh, uh, burning, so confused. confused. Oh, that would make more sense. Um, <laughs> so yeah, just as a lead off, of course, um, burn ever since the debut of Sun and Moon, the burn rules has changed now, of course, so you're always guaranteed at least to get 20 damage with it, but then you flip a coin, and if you get heads, then you're no longer burned. Yeah, and then, of course, Mind Blown, that's the attack that this deck is built around to fire 50 damage times the number of fire energy you put in the loss zone, so you only get to do it so many times. Yes, yeah, yeah, you only get to do it so many times because you can't just keep discarding them and then bringing them back with Naganade or just doing it over and over again, but you do play an absurdly high count of fire energy to do so, and uh, that's that's why it sort of works. And just to sort of prove a point here, 16 fire energy in Yesper's Ooh. list. Man. And that, a beast energy a as well. So that's almost like one third of your deck being just energy. And then, of course, we can't forget about that GX attack, uh, the one that's almost for sure going to be used this turn. Just discard a prize card. Yes, so the burst GX just enabling you to... Like discard a prize card, but then if it is an energy card, of course, you can just attach it on your Pokemon. It doesn't even have to be just a, a fire energy, actually. it could be any energy. So if you discard the, your beast energy, you can attach and that too. And then to the loss zone? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, no, but that's actually, would, would it go to the loss zone straight away? Because if it gets attached, surely. Oh, yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah. yeah okay. uh, well, so if that plays out, I have to see how, see how that works. And that actually could be relevant here because um, the beast energy is in Jesper's prizes. Ooh, hits the fire energy. Ooh, strong. Uh, pretty much the strongest turn Jesper could have uh, turn one. Get two Poi Pull in play, two energy, uh, one each on your Blissephalon. Looking pretty good. Yeah, that is absolutely fantastic. Now, uh, another annoying prize there for, um, from Jesper's side. We actually uh, didn't mention before the Heat Factory Prism Star is uh, in his prizes, of course, this being one of the new stadiums uh, that uh, is... All these Prism Star Stadiums, they seem to have like a similar sort of effect where they can't actually be affected by other trainers to get rid of them. So you can't like, field blow them away, for example. You can only get rid of them by like an attack effect or something like that or replacing them with another stadium. Yeah, so uh, it'll actually change the way people build their decks for this format where they might ha cut down on the field blowers for more stadiums. And we actually see that with two rounds in a row. Lysander's Lab making an appearance again. Yes, <laughs> just... Uh, yeah, an incredibly strong stadium that just shuts off all tool cards. And um, who, needs, who needs to field blower when you can just play a Lysander's Lab? And yeah, exactly. Get rid of all of them. Yeah, and um, not only that as well, but in the deck like the Cephalon, where you're doing so much damage anyway, you don't really need your own choice bands, so you're not really you know, affected by it as much. Because that's the thing, Esper is playing both. He's playing like Lysander's Labs and Heat Factory Prism Star because, of course, he wants to be able to counter opponents' Prism Star stadiums as well. So I just want to point out, uh, Jit's turn here uh, is pretty good. Zorark and a rare candy to Sidui without the use of Ninetales. That is very impressive, and uh, not only that, but he's been able to retreat now, and he's just going to use that uh, Alolan Vulpix as attack beacon, of course, for no energy, so you don't even need to attach to it to use it. You can just get any two Pokemon from your deck and put them in your hand. Oh, no, it looks like Jit forgot to place the Feather Arrow damage, or... Yeah, he even <laughs> Jesper gave him the two damage counter uh, on the dice. But, uh, but yeah, of course, once you announce your attack, that is it. Of course, you can't do anything. So that is, yeah, 20 damage that has been missed off. Oh, no, it's uh, unfortunate. If the Jit ends up being 20 short of a knockout later, he's going to regret that. Yeah, uh, it's little, but some things do add up, especially against a deck that 
is able to one shot all your Pokemon. Yes, so yeah, absolutely. Now, there is the first Naganaddle coming down from Jesper. Uh, pretty interesting card where it's not going to attack most times. It can. Mm -hmm. uh, but with charging up, just attach a basic energy card from your discard to Naganaddle. That is a free 50 damage every turn. Yes, yes, it is. And that, and that is in, that's just the entire premise of how this deck operates, just and yeah, doing more and more charging ups and then just do mind blown for lots of damage. I love it. Uh, Jesper plays down an energy switch, one card that I wanted so bad for people to play in this deck. <laughs> and that he plays it is insane. Energy switch, that energy to the other Blacephalon. You now have all your guys charged up and then Marshadow let loose. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. No. No. That's uh, that is incredibly strong, and I imagine Jesper will probably be wanting to find some kind of extra supporter here, just to also be able to you know cut down on Jet's hand size a, a little bit. And there is yeah, mind blown. Just get lost earning two energy, taking knockout on the Volpix, and picking up his second prize card. And it looks like the prize card was. I can't see it shuffling too fast. Yeah. If you took it from the other one at the, at the bottom of the prize cards as well, it should be the Heat Factory Prism style. Oh, no, he hasn't. He's taken one uh, above that one. So not Oh, that. man. So both his Prism star cards in the prizes. Yeah. But by the way, we can confirm that if you do use Burst GX and discard it, it'd be a uh, Beast Energy, you do get to attach it. So, yeah, that would have that been insane. That would have been sweet to see. <laughs> that would. That would. No. All right. So action back on Jit here. Uh, is really going to try to have to combat this just ongoing, uh, like, quick knockouts where, like, as long as Jesper gets energy, he's going to take these knockouts. Yeah, the ideal board state here for Jit is going to be if he's able to get two Decidueyes out because then two Feather Arrows onto a Blacephalon plus a, a, dou a double colorless uh, choice band full bench on a Zoroark means that it's two lots of 20, that's 40, plus the 150 from the writer's beating is 190, and that will be enough to knock out Blacephalons. That's going to be what Jit aims for here. It's not looking like it, especially with that Alolan Vulpix being knocked out last turn. He played a fresh one, but not having any access to Alolan Ninetales GX to search for that rare candy timer ball. No, exactly. Um, there goes a Feather Arrow onto the active, double colorless as well, and that's going to be right as beating 420. So I guess one thing that Jit could do if he finds the second decision right next turn is actually just do a double feather arrow for a knockout. But yeah. That seems pretty good. <laughs> it's not too shabby. Oh, and it looks like Jesper actually drew into a Sightseer. That was his prize card, I believe. Ah, okay. Uh, Sightseer, a new supporter coming out of Lost Thunder. Uh, kind of an innocuous supporter. It's like, all right, I can discard any number of cards I want, draw until I have five cards. Yeah. Draw until you have five cards is not really that good of an effect, but really when you can discard like three fire energy <laughs> from your hand and then draw four cards, that seems pretty good to me. Yeah, that's where that's where Sightseer really comes into its own and it really it sort of shines in the Blacephalon deck for that exact reason. You can just you know, discard all your fire energy, do do charging up and just kind of steamroll from there. Now Yeah, but not only that, Jesper also had the Guzma play, so he Guzmas the Decidueye taking away that double feather arrow knockout on the bench Blacephalon and already down to three prizes now. Goodness gracious. It was absolutely incredible. Actually, wow. no, he's down to... We did down to two prizes because where he did burst... Down to two, yeah. because yeah, he did burst, knocked out a Volpix, and now, yeah, knocked out, knocked out the Tijuai. Man, that, is, that means one more just big attack. We'll do it for him here. And Jit hasn't even taken any prizes yet. No. Uh, he still has all of his B strings to just surprise that knockout out of nowhere. Yeah. The only problem here for Jasper is that he will have to wait two turns to actually go for this win because he only plays the one energy switch and he's used it already and he currently has no energy on his field at all. So he has to, you know, to turn You could see a burn. Yeah, yeah, you could, uh, you could absolutely see that just to set up a, set up a knockout turn after. Man, how uh, you were right about this deck being insane. Yeah. Uh, like it's amazing to watch. It, straightforward, straightforward decks. Uh, you know, decks that have a sort of uh, linear, not in a bad sense, but a, a linear in the sense that the, the deck doesn't try to aim to do a lot of different things. But what it does do, it will do very fast and very powerfully. 
they've tended to perform pretty well, and Blitzephalon is just like the latest incarnation of that kind of deck. It's just, I'm just going to power up my, use my charging ups, I'm going to power up my Naganadles, I'm going to use Mind Blown, I'm going to just KO anything you put out, and I'm going to do that however many times I need uh, to win the game. It honestly reminds me of a more consistent Rayquaza, uh, especially like the version of Rayquaza that we saw at the World Championships, where uh, you really just played that and then some Tapu Lele's and like Mar Shadow. Yeah, yeah that, that, that's pretty much exactly the same sort of concept. Just do build up to very big damage very, very quickly. And there's the Heat Factory from the prizes. Discarding the Fire Energy, draw three cards. Such a powerful effect. Yeah, and that's the double charging up as well. And probably just going to see a manual attachment to Ablecephalon and the pass, or not even that. It's a little bit awkward, I guess. It doesn't actually have the Fire Energy in hand. Well, he attached the Ablecephalon before. I Oh, okay. <laughs> they all blended in there because yeah. it's all red. <laughs> <laughs> all blended to each other. That's the excuse, and we're going with it. Yes, yes, it is. So we do see one of the newer cards to come out in Jet's hand in Counter Gain, a tool that you can attach to any Pokemon, and if you're behind in prizes, it takes away a Colas from its attack cost. Yeah, it, it's a very, very, very strong card. It's a bit reminiscent of uh, the older Energy Gain. You know, you were, that, that was you, you, were, you were playing when that yeah. card was uh, legal. Of course, that was. Uh, also reduced the attack cost of SP Pokemon by one colorless, but uh, you didn't have to be behind on prizes for that one to work. So Yeah, that card was a little bit better, but this card's pretty good as well. Yes, yes it is. It'll be interesting to see uh, what impact it has in the format. Uh, it's been played a lot of one of in these uh, decks with Alola Ninetales, just because you can search it out. Yes, exactly. And, oh, here's a very interesting play here. So one better arrow onto the bench with Cephalon. Up uh, the Alolan Volpix gets evolved to the uh, the origi original Alolan Nine Tails GX, the water one. Of course, it does have that Ice Blade attack that just does 50 to any one of your opponent's Pokemon. So you can just use that to knock out the and there's Blacephalon. the Guzma Fire Energy. Yes, for showing. Yeah, I have game. Blacephalon's pretty good. And game one, taken down. Yes, for... A quick 6-0. That, that is wasting absolutely no time there. Yes, but I think I feel like Jesper is drawn to the sort of more simple but consistent decks. I mean, you think back to when you played a Yamega Vespaquen there. I mean, that was maybe that had like a little bit more to it because yeah, like you had to decide like what to attack with at the right time. But it was just simple. You know, I'm going to discard a bunch of stuff, you know, lead early with Yamega by turning my hand size to four so I can attack for free, and then you know, or rather by matching hand sizes. Um, that's it. No, no, Yamega was four, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm, think, I'm thinking of Yamega Prime. Yeah. That's fine. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I'm just going to do that to lead, and then I'm just going to finish off with Vesper Grand. And this is a similar sort of concept. I'm just going to discard all my Fire Energy, keep using Charging Up, and I'm going to use Mind Bloom however many times I need. Yeah, uh, so Jit's really going to have to put in a lot of work. He does have some kind of uh, play in this matchup where yeah. it's not as bad as it was game one. No, I feel like game one perhaps wasn't as representative as it could have been for the, for the power that Jit's deck has. He wasn't able to get out an early nine tails, so he wasn't able to use the ability early on to set up you know, two Decidueyes. If he was able to just set up two Decidueyes very quickly and then just fill up his bench to get the Zora powered up, he can just you know trade very easy, just one one shotting uh, in air quotes, Zorox left, right, and uh, Blacephalon's rather left, right, and center. But that isn't something that he was able to do because Jesper's setup was so quick and, and so powerful that it just kind of snow he just snowballed out of control uh, for Jit very quickly. Yeah, and the biggest thing for Jit here too is uh, trying to play around those B string turns. Uh, it's doable with Feather Arrow. It it is. It's it's very tricky though because like, there's some. Um, Man, anytime you prize fire energies with Blacephalon, it's a good feeling. Yeah, yeah, it is, because, you know, oh, if I just hit it off burst, then it's going to be very, very strong. There's that counter gain you mentioned. Yeah, also the Weavile, uh, a very interesting card uh, to tech in, able to play it just because of Ditto, Prism Star, and uh, he does play the one Sneasel as well, but... Evil Abomination being able to deal massive amounts of damage yeah. back to Jesper. Yeah, Evil Abomination, uh, actually, the Weavile is mainly in there for, for the Cephalon because what you, you might do is you might KO some of the Zorox to begin with using the Decidueyes and, uh, and all that, but eventually, you know, the Blacephalon player is going to target down those Decidueyes and KO them. So then what you can do is because the, the Blacephalon player is going to have a bunch of uh, Naga Nadals out, you just bring up your Weavile and then finish off the Blacef the, your last Blacephalon with that. All right, and this is probably the best turn Jit could have. Turn one, 
the straight up Professor Elm's lecture, not having to search out for it with Tapu Lele, even though he has it in his hand, but that means he can just get a supporter next turn to draw into everything he needs. Yep, super, super strong start there from Jit. Yeah, the uh, can never complain when you just open with an Elm's lecture. It's like it's like opening with a Bridget all over again. It's just I don't even need to, you know, I don't even need to risk anything else for this. I can just uh, do it like it is. Yeah, just uh, it looks like just neating up the board there a little bit. There's a Lysander's Labs from Jesper. Yeah, unfortunately, Jesper started one of his two Tapu Lele here. He's discarding the other one as well. <laughs> yeah, uh, Blacephalon is definitely your preferred starter just because that quick burst GX uh, is so powerful. We, yeah. we saw it there, uh, charging up the two, and then, yeah, I, I got the ball rolling. Yeah, even even a Poi Pole was maybe like a slightly better start because then you you know, <laughs> you know essentially using a Tapu Lele for nothing. But really, yeah, you want to start with Blacephalon because being able to, especially if you're going second, just being able to use Burst GX straight away is uh, pretty much one of the best ways you can open up. Well, and look at that combo there. Eye opener, and then you can Burst GX next turn for the fire energy. <laughs> Mind blow. <laughs> you get it? <laughs> I, I'm, I'm not sorry. Oh, man. <laughs> All right, there is a Lily for eight cards here from Jesper. He does find another Ultra Ball. Uh, he's gr really going to have to look for that Blacephalon here. Yeah, of course, uh, he's got a bunch of fire energy, so yeah, he's very content just discarding that, and we'll probably find the Blacephalon off that. Now, he won't be able to do Burst GX this turn, unfortunately, but like you mentioned, he can do the Wombo combo, <laughs> he can do uh, Eye Opener this turn, and something that's very important to mention with Eye Opener specifically is that, unlike with some other cards which we've seen which uh, fetch out your prizes, you don't have to shuffle your prize cards yeah. after you've used Eye Opener, so you can look at your prizes and then just put them down in the order you want, and then you know which one to take with Burst GX. Uh, reminiscent of uh, Azov, uh, the yes. old time walk ability. Yeah, very much, or, or Alphalithograph 4, if, uh, if, uh, if that's your preferred <laughs> method of uh, price search. Now, to be fair, he's probably never looking to use that attack. Yeah, no, <laughs> probably not. But he, but he could. Yeah, he could. He could. Um, uh, this is the also the problem with the deck as well, is your turn one, you really want to get multiple Poi Pool in play, uh, at least one Blacephalon, maybe two. But since all the Poipools have six, 70 HP, Elms cannot get them. So no. you're a deck that's not playing Elms. Uh, he only chooses to play one Ultra Space. So uh, opting for the two Lysander's Lab uh, uh, as more. Yeah, deciding that that's uh, more important, I guess. And my, my goodness, I just realized how <laughs> shiny Jit, Jit's hand is. There's like, a lot of gold in his, in his deck there. You see gold, gold candies, gold everything. But I appreciate the non-full arts GXs. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, you gotta, you, you gotta, you know, pick what's the the right thing to sort of uh, shine out. And uh, looks like they're talking a bit of discussion here, just making sure that they clarify. Okay. Yeah, they, getting the Lola Nine Tails and then using Mysterious Guidance to get Timer Ball and Rare Candy. I believe. Yes, uh, that is a double heads as well. So, oh no, field, oh, blower. field blower. Interesting. Okay. So that's gonna be. I believe that's a Zorok. Yes, it is. <laughs> he probably could be looking for a quick knockout here. Uh, I believe he has Choice Band in hand, so if he gets uh, Decidueye in play, uh, that's mm -hmm. a quick 150 with the Field Blower knocking out the Lysander Lab. Yeah, that's a very good point, actually. Um, although he hasn't gotten the Decidueye off of this, so he's probably yeah opting first to just go for more Zoroark, so he has more draw. Could also clean up that Tapu Lele next turn. Yeah, yeah, exactly. If he's, he's got the... Does he have access to Choice Man? Yes, he does, like, of course. So, yeah, the, the next turn, just Feather Arrow, knock it out, and then do something else. Oh, this is the awkward spot, though. He got that Zorak GX, but playing down everything in his hand, he, he does not have a card to discard for trade. No, uh, and I think he does decide that having the second Zorak is better, so he will just evolve that, leave himself with a zero-card hand. But if you've got two Zoraks down, it's really not that big a deal. And I think... Uh, Actually, not taking the knockout here is probably better for Jit because if he took the knockout, B strings come out. Yes, yes, absolutely. So this is actually it's like you mentioned before. There's now a potential here for Jit to play around B string. Although I don't know if he'd be able to take four prizes in one turn that easily because that's what he'd have to do to go beyond. Because he'd take two, yeah. and then if he took just one, by say by carrying a poi pole then B-String will still be active, so he needs to take like four prizes in one turn to play around that. Uh, it could be something maybe with Sublimation GX and a Feather Arrow. Uh, he is very far from that, though. Yes, yes, he is very far from that.
All right, what is the card? Uh, it's probably going to be traded away. Oh, it's a Decidueye, too. Oh, that is not ideal. Oh, he actually draws Copycat here, a supporter that got reprinted uh, back mm. from the days before where people thought it was going to make a big impact being able to just play it, shuffle your hand in the deck, copy the same amount of cards your opponent has. But yeah, the, the so far, it's yeah, been underwhelming. Uh, the problem with Copycat is that a lot of the time, it, players' hands tend to stick to like a sort of lower sort of size where copycat isn't that great because you know people the whole reason people play cards to draw more cards that you want to play them out to further your setup so if you're doing copycat just to draw four cards at that point you may as well do judge and then that way you're at least you know you know, maybe disrupting them because they have something good in their hand or even this, this is usually better options than copycat supporter wise could you imagine uh having to rely on copycat against a deck like gramble <laughs> oh <laughs> So I'll just shuffle my hand into my deck and draw nothing. <laughs> cool. All right, it's looking like Jet did draw into an Ultra Ball here, and he was debating what he's going to do. Actually evolves into that Alola Ninetales GX, uh, the water type here. Oh, yeah, no, no, that is uh, not ideal at all. Uh, now up comes the Ninetales, and that is going to be yeah, just the Ice Blade onto the Bench Blacephalon. All right, but he is pretty safe here. Uh, barring an energy switch, Jesper's not really going to get a big attack off. He's probably just going to burst GX. And uh, it's really not what he wants to do. He's already a couple turns behind. Yeah, yeah, he is already a couple of turns behind. He needs to start. He, he wants to avoid the same situation. He, uh, well, he, rather, he, you know, he wants to make sure he doesn't fall too far behind because uh, like, this is not looking like his first game at all. All right, and there's Bursting Burn, uh, putting the Ninetales burned and confused, trying to slow down the Ice Blade. Yeah, c kind of realizing that uh, going for the Burst GX here is a bit too greedy almost, because I if he doesn't buy himself the extra, t the extra turn here, then you know, Jit could just uh, very easily take a knockout using something like a Choice Band with a couple of Feather Arrows and using Ice Blade again. Oh, and Jit actually drew into... Uh, rare candy for the turn, and then had Rescue Stretcher off of that trade. Wow. That means with the Decidueye he discarded from trade before, he will have a Decidueye in play this turn. Yeah, that is absolutely fantastic. That is exactly what he wants to see. Now, yeah, there goes the Guzmo. He's going to go sort of Th get This rid. is the best possible turn, right? Yeah, uh, I, I can't see... <laughs> yes, but twisting background the Although, details. does he have another choice band? I, I doesn't look like he does. So if he does, oh, well it. the labs in play. Oh, so okay, yeah. So it doesn't matter regardless. Still, it's pretty good. And he actually opts not to play down the the situi anyway. It could be a big liability, especially if Jesper decides like, okay, I'm gonna use yeah. my knockout. Well, yeah, he, he can just sort of try to bring in. The the Decidueye as a, as a uh, sort of a surprise attack and try to again like I mentioned before do play out that turn where he just takes four prizes in one go and then he plays around B string that's probably what he's thinking of there and he'd rather yeah sort of make sure that Jesper yes, doesn't think that he has the Decidueye so when he does play it down he can just get the most out of it straight away and there is Sophocles another supporter that has kind of been underwhelming since it's been released but found a home in this deck discarding two cards from your hand draw four cards. Yeah, it's uh, absolutely uh, f absolutely fantastic here because you can just, like, similar with Sightseer, you can just, you know, discard fire energies and then that's what you want to do with them anyway. Now, looks like there's going to be... There's not an energy on the active now, uh, but it looks like just go for the burst GX. And Ooh, that is a Oh, it's an Aganado. Oh. No, yeah, well. And he only plays three. Oh, that is not good at all. Granted, he still took a prize. He, he did. Discarded a prize. He did, uh, technically. So that's uh, still some helpful in some ways. But yeah, no, that is really, really not ideal. But there is a big opening for Jit here. He will be able to completely play around B-String. If he's able to do the play like we mentioned. So yeah, there is the Chichirai like mentioned. So there is the Feather Arrow going to knock out the Tapu Lele. And, oh, yeah, well, yeah, of course, he's now got the KO on the active. So, yeah, that is it. Wow. Jit takes a... And uh, Jesper just concedes. Yeah. Uh, Jit also got the Weavile from the prizes, too, uh, meaning that, yeah, I would be able to knock out any Pokemon you brought up. Yeah, that's... Uh, 
it's not not really not going to work out there. And yes, but being you know having the skills to recognize that you know there's no point carrying that on, and there's going to now they're going to have plenty of time to finish off uh, game three and the match. Yeah, our first game three for this tournament so far in round two. Yeah. Uh, against two decks that were pretty hyped going into this yeah. tournament. And it's, and it's interesting to see uh, as well because, you know, we were saying in the game one was like, oh, our Blast is way too fast and, you know, like, it was completely dominant. But here we just see the completely opposite display. We saw, you know, Zorok and Night of Sidurai setting up so quickly and really not giving Jesper a chance to get into the game at all. So I guess maybe this matchup actually is more like 50 50 than we realize. And it a lot of time just comes up to you know, who can get the most effective setup more quickly. Yeah, it really depends on that turn one for both players, uh, Jit with his Professor Elm's lectures, and Jesper with just getting his Pokemon in play without Professor Elm's lecture. Yeah, that is one of the biggest issues, of course, because if you playing a deck which isn't able to make use of those, then yeah, you're relying on other stuff, and he's kind of opted almost to skimp out on consistency uh, compared to some of the other lists by, you know, maybe playing slightly less thick accounts of stuff like Sightseer and only playing like one Ultra Space, for example, whereas we've seen some other lists playing, you know, four ofs of Ultra Space, for example, just to make sure that they can search everything out as much as they need. Yeah, uh, it's definitely not the best because we saw it in that game too where Jesper goes Lily for eight and his hand is just like a bunch of fire energy. Yeah. <laughs> and then now you're going to the prizes. Uh, now there's uh, looks like a 1-1 one, one Naganado line prized. One fire energy uh, as well, so could hit that, but it seems uh, unlikely. And then from Jit's side, again, a mixture of things like one. Nothing too bad. No, it's, 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 it's workable. And here we are into going into game three. And uh, yes, we will, of course, be going first. Start off with an Ultra Ball, always strong. Yeah, and the Blacephalon start, definitely a lot better than that Tapu yeah. Lele start from last game. Absolutely. Even has his one of Beast Energy Prism Star mm. in his hand. So he might be a little bit wary uh, playing that straight away because uh, he's not seen Jit's full deck list. He doesn't know if maybe Jit might play an Enhanced Hammer or something like that. So I might just want to, you know, lead it a bit at first. Yeah, which usually uh, decks that play Alola Ninetales play those tech item cards because you can just, yeah, I'll search it out. That's why we see cards like Counter Gain. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, because it expects to fall back a little bit and then just being able to, and because it, like, you can search it out as well with uh, Nine Tails, it just, you always have it when you need it, essentially. Granted, Jit does not play a copy of Enhanced Hammer, so that Beast Energy will stick put on whatever it is, yeah. but Jesper goes the safer route, attaches yeah. the basic fire. And there's no reason not to, right? Because you, yeah. know, you don't know, and that you gain nothing by attaching to Beast Energy first regardless. Yeah, the, the worst thing you would want to do is attach Beast Energy, he goes Enhanced Hammer, and you take another turn to try to attack. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's just really, really not, not good at all. All right, so here we see Jesper again. Only one Poipool and Blue Cephalon in play. Uh, meanwhile, Jit... Turn one, Professor Elm's lecture. This, <laughs> it's too strong, man. And the one play that I love from Jit's deck so much is, yeah, it's turn one's really strong if you get Professor Elm's lecture. But if you actually go second, you know, uh, a little Vulpix is a pretty good card. Yeah, absolutely. Like your adventure, that, that beacon attack because it costs no energy. You don't even need to don't even need to attach to it to make the most of it. And he's now able to. Just, uh, well, after he does the Press Arms Lecture, of course, can just use Beacon to search out the evolutions for next turn. And looking at his hand, he already has some of the evolutions he would want. That Decidueye GX and the Zorark. It's pretty strong. And, of course, with the Ditto coming out, he can sort of decide whether he would prefer to have that become a Zorark or maybe, I, I believe, if it's just playing... Yeah, Night Tales or is he playing Dartrix as well? Is that an option for him? Uh, I don't he, believe so. No, he's not. Okay, yeah. so it's a, it's a four zero four Decidueye line here. <laughs> it's uh, it's particularly. It's, uh, I mean, it's completely. It's completely hey, valid. You can it's do just, it now. Yeah, you, Alola yeah, Nine Tales. Yeah, you can open so many doors. Yeah, and especially because the reason you might want to play at least one of the stage one previously is that when there are item lock decks around, you know, if your opponent just you know announces some kind of item lock thing and then you can't physically get out your stage two because all your items are blocked off, then that's pretty sad. But there isn't really anything that's played a lot in the meta right now which can block items. So you feel, feel pretty safe in knowing that you'll be able to actually play your red candies to evolve into your stage twos. And that's what this format's kind of evolved into with this new set is people have kind of forgotten about like Garboat or Trash Lance, for example, where yeah, yeah. you might be weary of playing a bunch of rare candies super fast, where 
this, it's like, yeah, I'm just going to get everything I can out yep. super fast. I don't care. Uh, no one's playing Garboder. No. It, it, it's interesting how that, uh, how that has evolved because it seems like Garboder does kind of like come and go in phases. And so if you're able to ex exploit certain decks which uh, make use of higher item counts in the phases where it's not as popular like here, then you're going to have a very good time at, you know, at whatever tournament you're at. And uh, the beast energy coming down from Jesper, uh, great utility here, being able to take a knockout on that Alolan Vulpix with just one energy being removed. Indeed. And interestingly, Jesper opted to loss zone the beast energy instead of the fire energy when he did the attack just then. That's because he's scared of Enhanced Hammer. Yes. He doesn't want to be left with you know no option to actually attack with uh, the Blissethon on the next turn. So he'd rather just guarantee that he's able to you know, keep that fire energy on there or at least make it more likely to keep the fire engine on there so that you can just attach manually again next turn to do another mind blown. Yeah, uh, really heads up play from Jesper there, kind of just making sure he doesn't lose outright. Yeah. But Jit's probably sitting there like, Haha, he got rid of beast energy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you think, yeah, that's pretty ideal. And not only that, but actually Jit's also thinking, ah, you think you're being clever getting rid of the beast energy, but you're still not entirely safe because I play one copy of Plumeria, Oh, so oh, no, this is uh, Jesper plays Plumeria. Yeah, this, oh, oh, okay. No, no, so, okay, right. So, no, that's not an option then. So, uh, <laughs> never, never mind that. But, uh, so, uh, which, yeah. Which Blacephalon uh, usually plays Plumeria to kind of combat the Skeptile. Yes. Uh, from Celestial Storm, I believe. Yeah, so it's the one that's uh, if uh, any of your Pokemon have grass energy attached, and then it prevents all damage from Ultra Beast. So if uh, yeah, if someone playing Sceptile puts a grass energy onto that Sceptile to protect it, then it's, it's almost nothing you can do, essentially, yeah. apart from, uh, unless you can Plumeria the energy off the, sept off the Sceptile itself, and then KO over Guzma before <laughs> they can get another one The off. next turn, hope they don't play another grass energy. Yeah. Now. All right, Jit. Played a Cynthia, got his Decidueye and Zorak in play. Uh, who needs a little Nine Tails GX? Uh, not not Jit apparently. Yeah. <laughs> Looks like he has Ultra Ball. Couple cards he wants to get rid of. It's Still looking... doesn't see. I don't see any energy in his hand. No, and that's obviously the biggest problem right now because you can have a good setup. You can do a couple of feather arrows to build up the knockouts, maybe, but without actual energy, he's kind of just yeah stuck, just to pass. Yeah, nothing you really want to. Oh, oh. Did he pass without using feather arrow again? Yeah, it looks like he did. And uh, yeah, Jesper's not not gonna let him take that back. I mean, he says sorry, you, you passed now. That, that's it. Yeah, there's so much on the line. Uh, you really can't blame anyone. Like. This is the rules of the game. Yeah. <laughs> there is uh, there's an another Cynthia this time from uh, Jesper's side. And uh, I mean, now, that, I mean, that, fed, that lack of feather arrow could actually make a big impact as well because, in theory, next turn, if uh, Jit isn't able to find a Decidueye, then all he would have needed uh, was this another feather arrow from the same Decidueye to put 40 on the Blacephalon over the two turns and then take a knockout with the Zoroark. But now he needs to find a second Decidueye to make that possible. It's not right. ideal. Jesper finally found his first Naganadal. But it's not looking like he'll be able to take the knockout on Zorak GX this turn. We could see just another Burning Confused or even a Burst GX. There's the Ultra Ball. We'll be able to get out a second one. If you can, if you can find it. Yep, there it is. Oh, no, he's getting out another Blacephalon, it looks like. Yeah, there it is. Okay. Eyeing down that full art one. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Prior priorities, right? <laughs> so, Jesper is finally starting to get his setup that he wants. He has the Naganadal in play. He has a Voipool that can evolve next turn. Yes, he does. And really kind of just like, okay, I'm going to start to get the things... Get the ball rolling here. Yeah, and uh, we did see him just, uh, well, uh, well, he did do the burst GX. He just looked like he discarded a Sophocles, so again, missing. I mean, given that the fire energy was at the, the top of the prize, it was probably unlikely that he was going to pick that one. So, But again, the, it's still one prize he further ahead, so he doesn't doesn't mind discarding the Sophocles necessarily. And wow, we actually see Jet discarding the Alolan Ninetales GX for trade, finally hitting the double colorless he needs. Yes, uh, at long last... And 
Yeah, it is interesting because he could have uh, opted to evolve the Ditto into Ninetales, but instead opted deciding that he'd rather have a second Zoroark out. Goes for a second trade. There's a rare candy. Yeah, uh, he already had one in hand as well with the Ultra Ball. I think he was just trying to trade into more stuff he could discard. Okay, that makes sense. But Ultra Ball here getting the Decidueye most likely. Yeah. Uh, second one in play. And that does mean that if he's able to find a choice band, then he can just go ahead and take the knockout on the Blacephalon. Well, well he, he uh, still well, needs a bench Pokemon. Yes, sorry, he does, need one more, he does need one more bench Pokemon. And I imagine that's what he's going to be trying to dig for with Cynthia. So choice band basic is what he needs. Does he get it? Man, that was a pretty good turn for not playing a supporter yet. Yeah, yeah, I know. That's uh, it's insane, right? That, that's the power of Zorot GX. Just uh, trade into all the stuff you need. Here we go. One, two, three, four. Five, four, five, six. There's the basic. Does he have the choice band? It does not no. look like it. But again, this might play into playing around Beast Ring later on. Yes, this is true. So he can now do yeah, just two Fed Arrows on the active, go for the Rise of Beating, and now it's just one Feather Arrow away from being knocked out. And in theory, you just do one Feather Arrow plus, plus a choice band, double colors to okay, or attack with Lele, for example, and then he's all good, and then he plays around the Beast Ring turn. Yeah, uh, it would have been interesting to see if J actually drew it and what he decided to do. Yeah. Uh, because that's really what separates, like, the really, like, top players, like, that do consistently well is they think a couple turns ahead. Like, yeah. okay, well, if I do this, how is it going to affect me when he's able to do this, this, and this? Yeah, it, it's, it's one of those things where you can't always necessarily get tunnel visioned into thinking, oh, I'm taking another prize. That means I'm closer to winning because if in the longer term you taking that prize means that you take less prizes because your stuff's being knocked out because you can't play around something like a B-string, then that's going to work out really badly for you. Yeah, so Jesper actually had the Sophocles in hand with a uh, treasure and a Guzma. Opt to Mysterious Treasure the Sophocles away, valuing that Guzma later on, getting that Tapu Lele and getting a supporter so we can draw into more cards. Yeah, he's uh, sort of recognizing right now where he, needs to, where he needs to be and what sort of he's missing more in order to be able to get set up more effectively and get closer to winning. There's a double charging up there and it looks like it's just going to go for the first attack. Yeah, he actually opted to attach to the bench Blacephalon instead of the active, knowing that it's almost for sure going to get knocked out this turn. Uh, oh, there's the choice band on the top of the deck as well. Yep. But I mean, this could still work out nicely for Jit, right? Because if he has, if he has access to Kuzma, which I believe he does then all he needs is a, an energy to retreat. And he can do that exact play that uh, we, were, we were talking about, where he carries the Lele and the Blacephalon and plays around B-String. Yeah. Guzma, Choice Band, Double Colorless. Wow. He's got it. And honestly, I don't know if Jesper can come back from that. He chose not to take the knockout this turn. Yeah, and that's... Uh, and not he'll still be at four prizes. That's not played into his favor at all. There, there's the Guzma. Is he going to go for this play? Does, does he see it? Yeah, there, there he goes. Out comes the Tapu Lele. Out comes the other Zoroark. Choice Band. Double Colorless. He's going for it, I think. Yep, Feather Arrow onto the Blacephalon, knocking it out. Man, what a big swing here from Jit. That's a absolutely ridiculous turn. It's exactly what he needed to sort of co combat the pretty ridiculous setup that Jesper was uh, starting to build himself up towards. And then there is the second Feather Arrow. Right is beating for knockout. Down to two prizes. A masterful turn from Jitmin right there. Seeing exactly what he needs to make sure that Jesper can't play B-String. And now Jesper is really, really stuck. Yeah, he has that Guzma in hand. He also has access to both of those charging up. A ton of energy in play, but will it be enough? So pretty much... What Jesper needs to do here is, well, he's carrying one of the Decidueyes, so that's going to prevent, and he's, oh, he's got the Marsh Shadow as well, that's really important. So now, if Jesper hadn't gotten rid of one of the Decidueyes, then Jit can just do, go Feather Arrow, Feather Arrow, KO, win. But now, with one of the Decidueyes gone, and uh, with the Marsh Shadow being played, now Jit needs a Guzma to do the same, because he needs to bring out the Sapulele. Yeah. Yeah. It all comes down to essentially these four cards. Yes, plus the one he draws his hand. Is that, is that Guzma? There's, there's so many gold cards and shiny I, cards, I really can't tell. Yeah, I'm having the exact same problem right now. Uh, there's the Lysander Lab, too, but he drew the Field Blower. Oh. 
Uh, that's exactly what he needs. Yes, so I didn't even notice that the left hand laps there, so that, that makes a huge difference, actually. Now, you, up you comes. You kind of have to be all in, right? Yeah. And uh, just showing what prizes uh, Yesma has left it is uh, a Fire Engine and a B String. But. Drew a Professor Elms for the turn, Field Blower, the Lysander Lab, trade. first trade, miss. Does he have one more? Yes, All he right, does. These are an important two cards. It decides the game here. No. There's a rescue wait, stretcher. Wait, 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 is there a Tapu Lele in the discard? If there is, he wins the game. Let's have a look. No, there isn't one. does not look like it. Can he get oh, wait. nine tails for Ultra Ball for a Tapu Lele? That must, be what that must be what he's going for. He does... Only play the one. Oh, no. Oh, no. It is in play. <sighs> What's he searching for, then? <laughs> if only he was behind Wait. in prizes, he could... Yeah, but, but he can... He's grabbing Countercatcher. What? What? What, 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 what just happened? Yeah, uh, he pointed out that they're at the same prizes, and he can't Countercatcher. Bad. Because his goal was Countercatcher, the Tapu, Lele, take a knockout, but he didn't realize they were both at two prizes. So Countercatcher does nothing, and... Yeah, oh, oh, but, sorry, I, I got confused. It looked like... Yes, but it was because he needs a jet. That's why I was a bit confused there. 